Hey guys, so uh, just a quick little thing before we start the deck profile. If any of you guys are going to the Pomona tournament in Southern California on uh, Sunday, I will be there competing. So if you see me there, feel free to say hi or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Let's get on to the deck profile. Okay, how's it going guys? Peshkats here, and today I'm going to be showing you this Charlotte build that I played today at Locals. I'm borrowing crap ton of cards from Cody, who's currently holding the camera, so thanks Cody for letting me use your cards and for holding the camera. Don't hit the pause button, please. No problem. Yeah. Alright, so anyways, uh, with this deck today I went 4 and 1. It is the Yusa Misa build, as you guys can probably tell from the title of the video. But uh, let's see, so round 1 I beat Disgaea. Round two, I beat Sal. Round three, uh, what did I play round three? Um, I'll remember at some point. Uh, round four, I lost to Kenny, who was also playing a Yusa Misa deck. And then round five, I beat Nisekoi. Oh, round three, I beat Bakemono Gatri. I played Kenneth, that's right. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll have the list up on the screen so you guys can just... Take a look at that yourself. Uh, but anyways, let's get on to the deck list. So uh, I've been messing around with quite a few things, and I think that this is this is the way to go with this deck. So let's just get right into it. Uh, for level zeros, I'm running 15 level zeros. So uh, let's start right here. I'm running four copies of the level zero now. She can't side attack. I was originally running the zero zero Yusa where. When she comes into play, you have to reveal the top card of your deck, and if that card is not an ability user character, then you clock it. But I changed it to this card because I needed more yellow for color fixing, and honestly, it's been working out fine. There's no problems with using this as an oversize. Uh, the downside that you can't side attack is... It's whatever. It usually doesn't come into play very often, so the uh, card's pretty good. I'm running four copies of the Yusa Suicider. So level zero Suicider, and when it comes into play, you can choose one of your characters that has change and give it a 2,000 buff until the end of the turn. So that's basically, you know, the entire deck. So yeah. uh, just gives a 2k buff to whatever you need it to. If you want to use it to buff this one so that you can reverse your opponent, get the Climax combo off, you can do that. Or just use it to buff a changer to kill stuff, you know, whatever. Very good level zero Suicider. Definitely better than the stupid Yosuke one. That one's garbage. Okay, uh, I'm running three copies of this Yusa. When it comes into play, it gets 1,500 power, and you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an ability user trait character, add it to your hand and discard a card. So this is a very good way to filter out your hand at any stage of the game. And at the same time, it can double as a 3k beater during the early game. So pretty good card to have on hand if you need to get rid of Climaxes. Uh, another good card to get rid of Climaxes is the one copy of the Takajo that I run. When he comes into play from your hand, you can discard one Climax to search your deck for any character that has change. And uh, just like all of your targets with the Yusa, you can search basically anything you need. There's a couple cards that you can't search, but uh, usually you can get whatever you want. And it's a discard outlet for your Climaxes, so good to get rid of those if you're going near your refresh. And the last level zero I run is three copies of the Yusa Brainstorm. So she's an assist 500 to ability user trait characters in front, which isn't a problem for this deck because everything's an ability user. And she has a spammable brainstorm, pay one, mill four, and for each climax you mill off the top, you get to search your deck for an ability user character and discard a card, uh, discard cards equal to the number of cards you searched. So uh, quite interesting that we have a search brainstormer in red, but uh, yeah. So 15 level zeros, there you go. Moving on now to the level ones. Um, I'm just gonna do it like this. All right, so I'm gonna start right here since I feel that like this is the most important level one in the deck. <coughs> uh, she has two abilities. First of all, she gives a global 1k buff to anything that has change. So that 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 whole bunch of like level threes and stuff all have change, and they all get buffed by this card for global 1,000, which is really good. Uh, it allows your level 1 game to be really, really fat. Uh, her other ability is when a character is placed onto your stage from your waiting room, other than herself, because uh, you can change into her, you can rest a character and give any character a 1500 buff until the end of the turn. So uh, this card's really good, especially if you're chaining multiple changes in a row. 
Uh, you can rest the cards that you're about to change out of, and then you bring in new cards and you rest those, and then you get a bunch of power buffs. And so yeah, the card's really good, really, really good. And I feel like this is definitely the most important card of, of the deck. It's what brings everything together. It lets you get big power on your turn and just overall fat cards, and it's just really, really strong. Uh, moving on to this level 1 Misa. So this is the card that can change into this. Um, you can change into it by paying one stock and sending this card to the waiting room at the start of the climax phase. So uh, it's also flexible in that it's a beat stick. It's 4k base, but it gets 500 power for every other ability user character on your field. So with a full field, it becomes 6k. If you got one of these out, it becomes a 7k. Really, really good for a costless card. And having the flexibility to change into... Uh, global 1k is just really strong. Now our other level 1s uh, in the deck are these yellow cards, the level 1 Yusa and the 1-1 one, one Misa. So uh, these two can change into each other. Uh, this one, the change cost is pay 1 stock, send this to waiting room to change into this. And the change cost for this one, since it's a 1-1 one, one, changing into 1-0, the change cost is actually put this card into your stock. So uh, you can use this to gain stock, assuming it survives the turn that uh, you bring it out, which is really cool. I, I, I think of it like a, like a almost like a reward for surviving. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's get on to their other abilities. So apart from changing, they both have a climax combo with uh, this stock soul, which I, uh, I run four of this climax, so four stock souls. And uh, so the climax combo for each one is different. For this one, if it reverses the opponent's character, and you have the Climax in play, you get to search your deck for an ability user character. So it's a lot like uh, Shimakaze in that sense. I like to think of it like Kirito from Sword Art Online. Since uh, they're both 1-1s, they both have an on reverse Climax combo to search, and they both Climax combo with Stock Soul. So uh, that's uh, that's the Misa. The Yusa, her Climax combo is when she attacks, if you have the Climax in play, she gets uh, 1,000 power for every ability user character you have in play, including itself. So if you have a full board, it gets plus 5,000. And uh, let's say you have this on the board, you change, put this into stock, bring this out. You have the 1-1 one, one in play. Since you changed, you can tap this, give a 1500 buff. So that's like, what, 4, 5, 6, 7k, you can get 12k. And if you're changing even more times in the same turn, you can get even higher. Like earlier today, I got this card up to 16,000 power. Crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's your level one game. I play three of each because you want to, you don't really want to see one necessarily like more than the other. You want to be flexible. Uh, typically, if I open this, I'll mulligan it out because I basically have five more copies in the deck that I can grab. Same goes for this one. You can pitch this and draw into that and, you know. Uh, you typically want to uh, go a little bit harder into your deck in your mulligan so that you have more options. You can discard whatever cards you need because those change targets are going to sit in your waiting room. Your waiting room, when you're playing this deck, it's kind of like your second deck. So, uh, lastly, for the level ones, I run two copies of the U counter. It's a 2k counter. Really not much to say here. It helps defend your uh, level one field, which is going to be pretty fat already. You got, uh, with this on the field, this is going to be 7k with a full field. This is 5-5. Five, five. It's not as bulky, but eh. What can you do? And then this is a 7k if you have that on the field. And typically your other level 0 is going to be a Brainstormer. So you can have some 7.5s on your field. And this will turn them into 9.5s, which is uh, pretty good. Alright, so that's it for uh, the level 1. That's... How many was that? 15, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. 15 level 1s. Alright, so for the level 2 game... <coughs> I'm only running three cards. Starting here is the anti-level three Misa. If she is attacking into a level three, she gets plus 4,000 power and plus one soul. So it's a lot like the Asuna from Sword Art Online, but it doesn't kick your opponent's character to stock after. It's a pretty good card. If your opponent plays a early drop level three, you can just bring this out, like smack it, hit it for two soul. Uh, this is, of course, if you aren't already, like, beating the crap out of it with, uh, this card right here, because this card gets really, really, really freaking big. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to have. And, uh, this, these two cards also change into each other. This one is a level support. Um, apart from that, uh, it has two change abilities, so, uh, these cards can change between each other for free. There's no stock cost. You just 
Like, let's say you have this one on the field. You can kill it and just play that from your waiting room. It doesn't cost any stock. But she also has another change into the 3-2 Misa. You can change into this by paying two stock and discarding one card at the start of your climax phase. So if you want those level two heals, it's pretty cool to have. Apart from that, it's level support. Honestly, I don't think the level support is all that useful because most of the time you're going to have this card buffing up your entire field for 1k global. So personally, uh, I like having multiple copies of this. This has the extra utility of like the tap for, for 1500 power, which I really like a lot. So the level support, not as useful, but having the change ability is pretty cool. And the last card that I run for level twos is the Mesa counter. It's a 2-5 backup. But when you use the backup, uh, if for some reason, uh, if for some reason your field's not rested because of these, uh, you can tap two characters in your back row. Well, I mean, you can tap two characters, but typically they're going to be in your back row. Uh, you can tap two more characters, and it becomes a 4K backup. So you get an additional 1,500 power. Uh, if for some, if for, if for like whatever reason your back row is not tapped, let's say your opponent's field was like super weak, or they crashed all their characters, and you didn't end up having to power buff for that turn, then you can play this as a 4K counter. Pretty good stuff. I ended up actually using the 4K effect uh, two or th two or three times today. So. Uh, good card. Now moving on to level threes, I'm running nine. So uh, first we have four copies of the, the Misa and of course her her climax. I'm running three Yusas and two Nows. So uh, starting with the the Misa, she's on play heal and climax combo with the gate that you see here. On attack, pay three stock, burn for five. A very, very simple ability, but very powerful. Uh, she also has a change into the 3-2 Yusa. Just like the 2-1 level support and anti-level three, this change is also free. So you can just change between them. There's no stock costs. You can just do that at the start of your climax phase. Uh, so it changes into this level three Yusa. She gains 500 power for every other ability user character on your field. So with a full board, it's gonna be 11-5, but let's be real, you're gonna have that on your field. So it's probably gonna be at least 12-5, if not larger. Uh, her other ability is, apart from uh, being able to change into back into Misa, her other ability is if she's in your front row and you take damage that's not canceled, you can look at the top card of your deck and you can either leave it on the top or send it to the waiting room. So having multiple cards on this field, uh, multiple of this card on your field is really good for surviving through your opponent's attack and getting into your next turn. You can change these back into Misas and heal some more. You can change the Misas back into the Yusas and just, it just loops back and forth and uh, you can heal multiple times over multiple turns as long as you can keep these alive. And that's really not hard because they're going to be super big because of that card, you have counters, especially this one. This one gets your 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 stuff really, really big. So yeah, uh, I really, really like these cards for uh, the level three game. Uh, the last card I run for level three is two copies of the now Musashi. If you have two or more other ability user characters on the stage, she gets a one thousand buff, bringing her up to eleven k. She doesn't get buffed from the uh, the one one obviously because she doesn't have change. But usually uh, with this card, you just want to hit your opponent and not really care too much about how big the card is. Of course, her other ability is the Musashi ability. When her attack is cancelled on the turn she comes into play, mill the top card of your deck and burn your opponent for the level of the milled card plus one. So it's just a good finisher. So typically, uh, in your level three game, uh, if you have as many of these as possible in your hand, that is ideal. This is what you're going to want to be looking for. And you're going to want to have the Yusas uh, waiting ready in your waiting room. So typically what you do is you play three of this. That lets you heal three times. And then uh, typically you won't have enough stock to use more than one of the gate combo in one turn. So change two of these out for, the, for two Yusas. And then you can use the Climax combo in one. And then just use the Yusas for... Uh, making it much easier for you to live through your opponent's turn because you're going to be able, uh, if you take damage, you're going to be able to top check twice because you top check once for each of the uses. And then uh, on your following turn, assuming everything stays alive, these two turn into Misas, allowing you to heal twice. And this turns into a Yusa, allowing you to uh, top check more, assuming that the card lives through your opponent's turn, which it should because it's freaking big. Uh, 
and you just keep going back and forth and back and forth and it just goes on and your goal is to either not die or just kill him with the climax combo uh i think with this deck the most i healed in one game was round five i was playing against english nisekoi and he just could not kill any of this stuff and i healed eight times in three turns so yeah sorry about that uh one of the turns he triggered a wind he actually put that back in my hand i think that was a bit of a misplay though he should have put this back so that i couldn't top check but um my field looked like this uh going going into uh his attack phase and then he uh, bounced one of these back to my hand and so that actually allowed me to get another heal off because i could play this back down heal one this changes into this this changes into this and i got two heals off that turn when realistically i should have been able to only heal once but yeah, very, very strong level 3 game. I really like it a lot. Uh, to summarize this deck, I feel like it's uh, pretty challenging to play. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make regarding the changes and uh, what you can search for, things like that. Um, playing around your level 3 game requires a little bit of uh, pre-planning. Uh, once you get used to the strategy, you kind of know uh, how everything works. Um, also, you want to be able to uh, maximize your power buffs with the 1-1. One, because one. Uh, sometimes... Uh, I've, I've already seen a couple people playing like this kind of deck at my locals, and they do tend to actually like miss the 1-1 one, one buff sometimes. And like I look at their hand, they don't have this counter in their hand, so I know that they can just tap it if they want. But uh, yeah, that basically sums up the deck. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, pretty challenging, but yeah, uh, if you stay on the board, you're just gonna, your opponent's gonna have a really, really hard time finishing out a game. And, uh, Cody, do you have any words on this deck? It's friggin' broken. Friggin' broken. Alright, there you have it, folks. This has been Pesh Cats here with Cody. Thanks again, Cody, for letting me borrow all this stuff today. No problem. And I'll see you next time. Bye.